So, welcome everybody. It is the first, oh, the first wrong slide because we actually had a buff in Dublin. See? We should one time with professionals, but welcome. Anyways, we already introduced ourselves. <laughs> I, I, but I had more beer, beer back then. Those pictures are very old. They, no, they are very current. I, ha I downloaded them from LinkedIn just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, if, it, if, it is live on, if it is live on LinkedIn, then it, then it is current. So first, we have a couple of news from the leadership. I already told you I am uh, the community manager for the Octo project. This is actually a really new thing. I've been appointed like two uh, months ago. Before that, um, Nico Deschesne had that position and he basically handed over to me. He was one of the folks who actually enabled me to grow into this role. So for the record, again, thank you, Nico, to ma for making this possible and for helping the project over the last five years. <laughs> Having said that, there are like two newbies in the organization. One I explained already, that is me. The other one is uh, Megan Knight. I don't know, is Megan around here? No, she's oh. probably doing work. And she serves as the advocacy chair, which means she takes care of all outreach e things, and I take care of all the peoplish e things. In case you like feel getting involved, talking to, talking to us, signing up as a member, whatever you feel like, we, we could do to raise awareness or raise awareness in your organizations, please talk to us. Do you want to take one? Sure. Um, so if you're interested in working on neat Yocto stuff, uh, I gave a talk earlier today where I covered some of the material that is covered by this RFQ. Um, I cover those in more detail in the talk this morning. This is funding available from the Yocto project to work on some uh, specific problems we have and the time frame for this is basically ASAP and if you need more details on that you would want to speak to Ross Burton wearing his hat as Yocto Project TSC member technical steering committee and there's more information at the URL on the bottom you should be able to find it on the front page of the Yocto Project website but it might be in the spinny thing it's what a, that's how it was described to me the spinny thing, okay. So there's some new members for the Octo project. Um, EX, EIN, which? Exine. Exine, okay. I'm not super familiar with them, but they've been great. They are doing uh, some security fancy stuff for embedded devices and they're from Italy. Thank you for signing up. And Qualcomm has signed up as another member. So that is Platinum very good. member. Platinum, yes, very good. We love platinum members. We also like our silver members, Bootlin, Consolco, and The Smile. And again, formally pointing out, there are others too that also have signed up, which for various reasons just do not want to be mentioned. So in case you have money to give away for f no good reason and don't even want people to talk about it, give, oh. give it to us. Okay. We will promote you, but if you don't want to be promoted, we'll take your money. Cool stuff. Um, do you want to do this one? Okay, I'll do, do this one. Uh, we ran the Yocto Project Dev Day on Monday, which was an in-person, mostly presentation uh, event. But for, for you to like take something home with you and actually get your hands dirty, David Reyna uh, prepared two sets of self-paced training resources you can do on your like own whenever you feel like, whenever you want to get um, more involved with hands-on experience. It, uh, it's two things. It's the dev tool stuff and it is a new class on user space, which features a lot of topics that are like relevant for people getting started and everyday tasks. And it is uh, reachable under that very uh, ugly link. Speaking of virtual learning and training, we are planning or we will have another virtual Yocto project summit in the end of November, as far as I know. 
it's it's an, a thing that we've done a couple of times already. Two days of interactive and presentations. Everybody will be there for you to just like explain, interact. Yeah, you, you know it already. Sign up. It is super cheap, essentially, and we love to see you there too. Uh, Open Embedded is basically an organization of people who are working with the Open Embedded build system, and this organization has existed since circa 2007. Individuals can join it by mailing a short bio to board at openembedded.org or look at this web page that will say the same thing. We have been running a workshop around FOSDEM when it's in person, and we ran one this spring. It was very successful, sold out. And we're planning to do it around FOSDEM again. We're not going to say 100% because we need to know when FOSDEM is scheduled and make sure that we can get people to travel and show up. So there's a little bit of uh, fuzziness there. For people who've been around for a long time, we had a German EV for a while and we have made progress dismantling that. Um, it is very challenging working with an organization where you get papers in a language you do not understand. And thank you so much, Jan Simone, for helping us with that. What do we already know? What, what people already know. Yeah, because uh, we said it aloud on Monday. We are super proud to publicly declare that the LTS support period or the LT support period is officially and permanently extended to four years. That is the news. And you should also thank the members of the Yocto project for making that decision and spending the money to make it happen. Um, LTS releases are not free. They do cost a substantial amount of money to keep them running and make sure that people are looking for the uh, CVEs and bug fixes that are needed. So please thank your Yocto Project members. Come on, it looks cool. yeah. I, I think we're good. And with that, we now get to the fun part of the boff. Yes, we throw chocolates. Oh. Four, four questions. So it works like this. Dangerous. <laughs> of course. It works like this. Whoever has the first question or wants to be the first raises their hand as, as, as quick as possible. What's the difference between Open Embedded and the Octo Project? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. But once we find out, we tell you. <laughs> no chocolate Mir 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 for beer. Mirza? Mirza was? Uh, yeah, yeah where's, we, we need a runner. We need a runner. Here. He has it already. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so my, my question was related to the last slide around uh, LTS. Okay. Uh, so I'm kind of curious on, on kind of why extending uh, it to four years and kind of the motivations. Because, because so, my experience so far has been, uh, I've been working with, uh, with a project that's been on Dunfell for like the four years, so yeah. uh, at, the at the end of it, uh, and like what we have seen so far is that like the actual BSP maintainers are not necessarily tagging along. Yes, uh, uh, there it. are. So, I'm just so we can maintain the core layers for four years, and when you get past four years, it's going to get exponent exponentially difficult <laughs> to maintain them. There are project members that will sell you longer term support contracts and we don't want to step on members that who are actually charging money to do this. It, we're basically trying to make it as easy as possible for people to use the Octo project. But at the same time, it is a collaborative project and you know, there are limits to what we can do. And you go past four years and it gets hard. So the reason for moving from two to four is because two is too short for a lot of people. Yeah. So a lot of BSP layers, you know, even now are not at Kirkston yet, right? But from the other end of it, having it go to six or eight or 10, right? Like Dunfell is actually quite difficult to fix all of the CVEs at this point. And the reason is that all the upstream projects keep moving forward and they will not backport their, their fixes to all of their stuff. And we don't have the resources to do it either. Yeah. And so then we, we just 
end up with th that technical yeah. debt. So our advice is actually every two years, grab the new LTS or whatever, sorry. Every time a new yeah. LTS is available, move to it. Yeah, and uh, on, that, on that occasion, let's uh, give a big shout out to Steve Sackerman, who is, when he's not brewing his own beer and grinding coffee, doing an excellent job as the LTS maintainer. <laughs> I wonder if he woke up for this. Huh? I wonder if he woke up for this. I don't think so. <laughs> Next question. Okay, this is going to be a long throw. Buckle up. <laughs> I tried. E for effort. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of a follow-up question. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but the LTS, you're still releasing it every two years and not every four years now, right? Every four years now. Okay, no. So oh. no. 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 Oh. Okay. So we have every two, Maybe I every two years question. we have a new LTS, but it stays for four years, right? Exactly. So Dunfell will basically go into zombie mode next spring, and Kirkston will stay around as, a, like, as an adult, and whatever crazy name Richard comes up with in the next spring release will then be like the new kid on the block with a lifespan of four years. And Kirkston has another two years ahead. Perfect. Move now. Huh? Yeah. Don't wait. Anyone else? Come on. Chocolate. Ask ridiculous questions, except for the one being asked. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, actually, I'm not sorry because it really looked funny. <laughs> so I think it was asked this morning as well at nine o'clock. What about supporting GitHub, GitLab, web-based workflows, pull request-based workflows, right? Uh, can, can, can I give a politically incorrect question? question or uh, answer. <laughs> yes. Okay. The answer is... We do not have the resources to follow up with more than one submission channel. So if somebody cares about those ways in such a strong feeling to make it that it needs to be possible, sign up, dedicate engineering and make it possible. Currently, we have a, let's say, known supply of developers that we do not want to lose because without them, we would be not here. And we, we understand that outreach is, impos uh, is important, but uh, not at the cost of, of throwing everything away that you already have. Plus, I don't want to sound like the old neckbeard that knows everything, but um, let's say we are talking about fairly advanced technology here in some places and you're f free to feel insulted right now. But I think figuring out how to send a patch is okay-ish if you want to make code that deploys to millions of devices. I'm also told that chat GPT can send email for you. Terrible at writing recipes. But it tries. It does. it does try. Yeah, it's a difficult problem and we are painfully aware that a lot of people culturally are not happy sending patches via email and we talk about it that's why i said it is a politically incorrect answer yeah i know next next, next person with... <laughs> is it okay we got one from the internet <laughs> one was Excellent. good it that... says um what is the distro etymology for pocky and which um major list Linux distribution is the Pocky reference distribution most like. It is like a Japanese form of chocolate because that's actually where the name comes from. Pocky. Pocky sticks. Pocky sticks. Exactly. And it is like no distribution because it is not a distribution. Let me let oh, me no no it's a reference distribution. <laughs> Pocky is a chocolate stick. It is not a Linux distribution, but it helps you to create your own. No. In, with 
buy, buy ingesting chocolate. I just don't agree, man. <laughs> no, not sure. Hmm? No, it's a reference distribution. It's a reference ah. chocolate. <laughs> I, if you want, I would mm -hmm. answer that as saying it's probably most like Debian because a lot of the patches that get applied to recipes to fix things were copied from Debian in some senses. So it might have a slight flavor mm -hmm. of Debian with you, Sys5 in it. Where's the mic? But that's just sort of an off-the-cuff answer. I mean, it basically okay. is its own uh, distribution. Can I give an answer? Uh, is there any distribution left that is using uh, init scripts and not systemd? Because that's what, what Pokey is. So it's not like anything else out there, is, is it? Huh? So when is Pocky going to start using systemd as a default? Huh? When's Pocky going to start using systemd as a default? Never. No. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. Huh? Famous last words. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard question, and Sys5 init is another thing that might shape your opinion of what distro it is most like. Probably. Did you come up with that yourself or? No, it's emailed to us. Seriously? Wow. You can read email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one day you have to explain it to me. <laughs> it's probably his chat GPT, catch uh, email for him. Okay, and more people, ask us questions, anything you've ever wanted to know. If nobody asks, then I'll start asking stupid questions, and you don't want that. We'll start asking, all huh? oh. yeah, give him some chocolate, because I asked him a question. More? There is no question, I just want chocolate. Yeah, that's, no, we, that's perfect. We already asked you a question. Um, not specifically a question for you, but a question for the audience, pretty much. Whom of us people in the room use System D with the Octo, and whom uses okay. System so Five in keep, it? Keep your, keep your keep your keep your arms up. <laughs> yeah, keep your arms up. <laughs> Thanks. These yeah. are a lot of hands, as far as I've Who seen. Who uses Sys Five in it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so the question probably is why is it not the default? Exactly. Okay. So it is like this. If it wasn't the default, nobody would realize it once it breaks. I'm going to be brave and put on the record that I do want to switch Pocky to System D and Pocky all config to Sys5, but I can hear the hissing from Richard. <laughs> Across the oceans. Um, so I think that's the right thing to do, but obviously reasons. But photos of that survey would be useful evidence. I'll, I'm going to yeah. take another one. Do you want to you raise your hand again as the only um, admitting System uh, 5 user? <laughs> that, that, that it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Oh, oh yeah, Alexander also. Okay, Alex, please. Would the real Alexander please stand up? Please stand up. Okay, they all, no, they own the only the only uh, system five user in the room. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but you can get another chocolate for it. Um, I will say that I have talked to people who use Sys five in it because system T system D based distros uh, tend to be too big to fit in QSPY, and that is an actual interesting problem. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm just. Yeah, I think that's an aberration and we need to think about that. And if I was talking to Linux for space people, I would suggest they look at init systems very carefully. Um, so I have another question for the audience. How many of you are using a release older than Dunfell? It's okay, you can admit it. We won't. <laughs> Who knows of people using something older than Dunfell? Really? I yes. got a support mail okay. last week that said, can you help us upgrade from Sumo to Sumo? Okay. Yeah. All right. I, ha I have to ask that question because the numbers are getting better than they have. 
but it's still, from a security point of view, it's terrifying. Um, I, okay. I, I have a question. I know, I know you have already answered, so basically oh. you don't really give a shit. Um, <laughs> sorry. That, that is uh, possible. This is for the GitLab uh, versus patch mailing. No. So if we could do a raise of hands of system D where I think the outcome was kind of known, how many in here would stop contributing to open embedded if you were not using sent mail by patches? I'm interested because well, it yeah. sounds like it's the majority. But but how many people would start contributing? Yeah, you could do that as well. But yeah, it's, it's not it's both questions are yeah. kind of relevant. Yeah, they're not overlapping. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who would start contributing? So maybe I'm just the only one, so that's fine. Okay. But, but maybe start contributing would mean that you refuse to send mails. And that's, again, yeah. it, it leaves a, a big gray zone because maybe there's a lot of people that are agile enough to adapt, but have strong preferences, but not refuse to do work. Because yeah. it sounds like you say that there are core members and people would just leave the project if they, you shut down the patch by <laughs> The fundamental problem is code reviews. So not everyone, especially the people that you might want or that kind of do drive by code reviews, like, like Kim, who are so busy, they're not gonna have time unless it's right in their inbox and they can look at it very quickly. If they need to go to a website and click on your specific one, they might not review it. Yeah. yeah so the, the thing about both GitLab and uh, GitHub style uh, reviews though is, is that if you want somebody specifically to review something, you put their name on it and they get an email in their box. And then at worst, it's clicking on something, but you, you do in fact get the diff uh, as a part of the email as well. So what I'm, well, all I'm saying is, 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 that, is that if people need to review it and uh, their names are, albeit added to it, they, they will get an email. And the Linux kernel does this by putting them in the CC. And it's been this way forever. Okay, here's the problem. As a person who does a lot of open source stuff, I've got 400 to 600 open source projects that I follow, and all of those go to my Gmail. And I can sit in the morning with my cup of coffee, with a phone, and look at my Gmail. I can look at it on my iPad. I can look at it through Mutt. I can look at it through whatever, okay? Now, every vendor that I touch wants me to use their form. And so now I've got 8,000 forums I have to go look at. And I have to have all those tabs open in order to get notifications unless I'm lucky and they send it to, G to mail and so, so on, right? I don't have the time or energy to follow every single one of these places. So right now you're saying GitLab, but can we have GitHub too? Can you do Discord too? Wait, <laughs> can you also do Gitter? Wait, could you? No, you're extending, you're extending the question. That's yeah. No. That's um, the opposite of what we've just said, so. Yeah. Can I get to make it back? <laughs> we, we've just said that a, we've, we've just we've just said that an email will be sent. So in fact, you would still have those emails, and we were just talking about one, not many. So the the, the suggestion the suggestion the suggestion is is moving to a different way, not many different ways. So and I I, 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 I also want to point out that that. Uh, uh, one of the problems that we have in Open Embedded is there's there's a few people doing a mountain of work, yourself included, uh, and people are burning out. Uh, On-ramping people in order to start helping, the easier you can make it, the better. Now, what that means is change for the people who are already doing a lot of work. But if you can on-ramp people faster and using tools they're already familiar with, it makes it that much easier to ultimately get people in to actually start offloading you so you can do things. So I get you're, you're comfortable with your way of doing things, but I, I, would, I would urge you to be open to something that allows people to help you more easily. Yeah. That's not my point. Yeah, can we- I understand, but that's the point we're we trying to make. Can we take the rest of this conversation to after the ball? Okay, because it's go gonna, forward. it'll go on forever. The one thing, the one thing I will close this with is, I do not want to see the project use a proprietary workflow yeah, because no, I was around when it was using BitKeeper and when BitKeeper went away, it was tremendously painful and really did affect the project's ability to work for a year or so while we sorted out the next distrib distributed uh, version control system. So 
I am not a fan of proprietary workflows at all. But that said, I believe GitLab is open and you can self-host. So I think that's why it was, it was the one brought up. That, if you're going to have that conversation with me, you should have that background. And moving on, does anyone have a question? Yes, in the back. Okay, uh -oh. that, 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 that is unfair. <laughs> that is so unfair that Nishan can't come up and fetch his chocolate. No. <laughs> uh, this is more a um, question for the, for the entire group. Who uses crops and do you find it useful? And who doesn't use crops is more interesting, maybe. Who is crops? So, Nishanth, maybe you should describe how you want to use crops and see who would like to do that. <laughs> I mean, let, let, rather than talk about a specific thing, let's talk about the general thing. Right. So. The common complaint we have among our users or introduction. So I work for TI and we have the infamous Meta Arago that we create as a distribution on top of uh, Yocto layer. Uh, and a lot of our products and customers kind of take derivatives out of that, add their layers and create products. The typical challenge that we have are especially customers with maybe one or two engineers kind of range who are not very familiar with Yocto. So, Build systems, right? Um, favorite thing, every package, dependency. Um, when we started um, recommending uh, documentation to read, and that's been a disaster. People forget to install one package, they have a dis different ver version of the distro, things have never worked. The solution that we found was to use crops. We started using crops as a container for doing build systems, both uh, for our customers and in our build environment. So we have a build farm too. Um, and that has saved our life quite a bit. I'm kind of curious, is there anyone else in this group who actually use it? And do you find it useful? Any areas that you think it can help improve? Yeah. Mario? Mario. Just, just wait for the mic yeah. and get some chocolate. <laughs> uh, just to share my experience at BMW, we use something that I think it's very similar to crops uh, internally, because I think the, uh, the same reasons that you mentioned, uh, we want developers to have a reproducible environment to run builds. And that's pretty much, and without host contamination, I, I mean, limited host contamination, yeah. limited to what's available on the container. And that's pretty much why we use this approach. Unfortunately, I think what we use internally uh, precedes uh, crops. No. Yeah. Nope. No. I think we started using that in 2015, I guess. That's when crops started. Okay, yeah. So conflicting dates <laughs> yeah I mean uh, but yeah I, I suppose it's a similar concept and that's pretty much what we uh, the, the concern that we have is reproducibility in uh, some kind of environment that developers can use without messing up with system dependencies and stuff like that okay, I want to ask the actual question which is how many people are using containers as your build system okay Aha. So how many of you are rolling your own containers? Okay, why? Right? So anyway, I, sorry, that's, that, I know, it's a, it's a facetious question. So it is simple, right? But honestly, like, this is 100 man hours or more, right? Or person hours or more, right? That we have all wasted because you recreated your own. So hold on one second. Okay, so one of the things that was needed in crops or the crops containers that we have now was a way to extend it and it wasn't that easy. And so I'm just gonna plug again, we've got a new effort moving forward, which was very much inspired by TI's request to generate your own build containers, right? So now there's a, for those of you who are, you know, doing your own thing, you might look at a way to, you know, go onto something that's gonna be standardized and supported and everything instead of having technical debt. Yeah. So anyway, I'll, I will let you respond though. And Tim and Pidge had a talk on that on Monday. 
Okay, my, my comment is simply that I roll my own, but I think that's putting it a bit hard because I basically just look at the, the quick start guide. I do that in a container and, and that's it. So I have a Docker file. It's basically, even it's multiple file, it's more or less like five, of, five commands or something like that. And that just works. And, and going to crops is like exploding to a complexity of times thousands of something for, the, for nothing. The so problem. I think, it, it, I think if, if we put what is in the quick start guide in a simple Docker file and had that as an alternative, a lot of people would use it, I guess. But maybe it's true. This is exactly what's in the Yocto base container and the Yocto builder. So what did we add? We added the, build, the ability for it to automatically go into a mode that can use BitBake. The other thing is I'm gonna guarantee that half of you are doing something wrong in terms of user ID and GID and things like that. So there's problems with using containers that are very, very hidden. And so we already went through that and made things a little bit better. So to claim that it's a thousand times harder, git pull crops slash pocky. You're, watching You're done. Cards. It's, it's even fat and it's in the getting started guide as well, right? Anyway, but Tim, yeah. Mario had his hand up. Well, Alex oh, was first. Okay. Let's keep rotating because so, we're running low on time. Yeah, if the problem is merely that the tools on your host distribution are wrong, then you don't need containers at all. You just uh, install the build tool Starble and uh, it will tell you what to do. Um, and I personally don't like containers because in general I don't like uh, unneeded abstraction layers. And if I can avoid unneeded abstraction layers, I absolutely do. So. Mario? Mario. Another thing that I should add, uh, in the tool that we use, uh, the user containers, uh, besides this uh, feature that we want to restrict the, the level of mass that developers can make, it also more than that in a way that it serves uh, as uh, a glue between the, the build system and the CI system. So it's really extensible. It still some ideas from Yocto, for example. It can be extended because in, uh, BMW has a a uh, great vari a variety of systems that we build. And each system has a little bit of a difference, even in the Yocto configuration. And this tool kind of wraps the Yocto configuration and allows is different systems to extend it. So it's a bit complicated and it tailored to our needs, but it, it serves especially to Tim. have build reproducibility Got and it serves and as a glue up. between the build system and CI system. Okay, so you just summarized exactly what TI wanted to do and exactly why Crops Generator has been created. So that's so. Please, if this is part of what you want to do, we'll be having a meeting. Join. All right. So we got five minutes. Does anyone else want some chocolate? Surely you've got a problem. You want to ask the Yocto experts in the room. Free technical support. Megan just wants chocolate. Me Megan wants, do you actually want something? You you missed your you you missed your own shout out because you weren't here. So pl would, would you please stand up for a Hi second? Hi everybody. That that is the one and only Megan Knight that I just introduced like half an hour ago as our advocacy lead. Hello hello. And yes, my question is advocacy related. Uh, what event would you like to see us at next? Ooh. Rock and Park. <laughs> Where are we not and we should be? Is there an event that we're missing? We tried Embedded World for our first time this year and it was really well received by the community. So I'm just curious, any suggestions? We do not plan to be at Open Source Summit Europe due to the lack of embedded and IoT content. If that is a miss and you think we should be there, we're open to having a conversation. Well, there is LinuxCon and there is the Kernel Summit, so those are the most relevant things there. The rest is pretty distant from embedded. Kernel Maintainer Summit, yeah. the invite only one for like 30 well, people. Yeah, LinuxCon. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I mean, the thing we're really interested in is new and novel shows that we haven't been to before. 
Where do you guys hang out if you're not coming to this event? <laughs> Was that a serious answer? I, I didn't actually hear it, but it seemed yeah. funny. A follow on question from, from a different perspective. Where do your managers go? Ooh. Ooh. Good question, good question, Tim. Well done. What shows do your managers go to? Okay, all right. Uh, what? CubeCon. Oh. Oh. Really? Tell me more about that. <laughs> if you have ideas, please stop by the booth between now and when the end of the day. So we realize we keep talking to you know those of, of you and you're here. So we already reached you. <laughs> embedded world, Nishan says. I'm yeah. pretty sure embedded world will be on the calendar in the future. It, it will be. Yeah. Okay. Do they have an embedded world in America? Yes. It's For the first time ever, embedded world North America happening October in Austin. Yes, it's a brand new event, uh, 2024. Yes. What year is it now? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no clue. It has been a long week. Okay, we have, we have one minute, which means one question with a short answer left. That is a very short answer. It's dead and gone. People might be interested <laughs> in it, though. <laughs> People might be interested in it, though, is a story I heard. And the Eclipse plug-in. It is dead and gone. Um, Joseph, um, what is the official Yocto Project song of 2023, according to you? Uh, the official what? Song. Song. <laughs> that is a tough question. If you ask me, then probably something like with a trident, uh, party, uh, pirate treasure party crew, something like that. We are here to drink your beer. <laughs> no, the metal th th version this of is Africa? not an official statement. Um, <laughs> let, let, me, let me look at, no, seriously. Okay, this is, this is a good question. <laughs> if, no, seriously, I have it was supposed to be short. I, I know we're on time, but give me give me <laughs> fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. I tell you I'm sorry. That the state that the official song for the state of understanding of embedded Linux, Yocto, and the support by vendors is sad but true. <laughs> With that, we're out of time. Thanks, everybody. I've got some chocolate left.